Guys, therapy is broken, let me explain. Suppose you and I are in this room, you're in the corner of it, you're on one of those nice, comfy, love seat recliners, like the kind in the movie theater that you know, goes all the way back, right? You've got in your hand a nice lemon flavored iced tea with one of those little umbrella toothpicks and a twirly straw. And I'm asking you, what's on your mind? You know, what do you th what's been going on? And you'll say, oh, I'm worried about this, or I've got this challenge, I have this problem. You wanna know how I wouldn't respond? Oh man, I'm, I'm really sorry that you feel that way. Is this because of your past? Is this because of your depression diagnosis, your ADHD, your abandonment issues, your fear of failure that we all know that you have? The answer is no, I'm not gonna ask you those questions. I would be like, okay, what are you going to do about that? You have this, you have this problem, okay? How are you gonna respond? We all know these people that are perpetually in these cycles of, of healing. They know all the rituals. You know, they go to all the yoga retreats and Tulum or whatever. And it's like, my question for you is, is like, when do you become, when do you get to become this new version of you that is already whole, healed, and enough? Guys, you wanna know the fastest way to heal? It's to stop labeling yourself. Get rid of these attachments to these buzzwords, dude. When does this person that you're dreaming of start to become a reality? I want you guys to understand this because I think a lot of traditional therapy overlooks this one thing is that what if this version of you, what if this whole healed, complete enough version of you isn't something that you eventually attain, isn't something that you eventually heal yourself into, but is something that you step into that you claim, that you position yourself into this new identity. We tend to feel depressed and anxious when we feel hopeless in situations, when we feel like we don't have any control. But what if none of this BS actually matters? It's like right now, just change the way that you think about yourself. You might say like, oh, you know, well, it's easy for you to say, or you don't know what I've been through. And it's like, dude, if this is what you're saying, you don't actually want to heal. You're addicted to feeling a certain way and you like it when others sympathize with you because it's, it, it weirdly feels good in a way. It's reinforcing. Next time you catch yourself saying, I have this problem, just say, I have an opportunity here, right? You don't have a problem. You have an opportunity. And that's the truth of the matter. We hear the advice a lot of the times to change perspective, change perspective. It seeks to minimize the problem by basically aligning yourself with a new angle in which you're viewing it. Well, what if you were already perfectly equipped to handle that problem, to handle that opportunity, and it didn't require you to change perspective? Changing perspective minimizes the problem, but changing yourself, guys, that maximizes, that glorifies who you are. You no longer need the tools and the tips and tricks to deal with that problem because you start to understand that you are the solution, that you are already perfectly equipped in this present moment right now to deal with whatever is going on in your life. The Bible talks a lot about faith. Jesus says it's your faith that makes you well, not your tips, not your techniques, not your self-diagnoses. In other words, what you believe about yourself determines, it determines everything. Your inner world always mirrors your outer world. And unfortunately, you know, it's not the other way around. In fact, I'd say that most people's forms and their routines of self-care are actually just these elusive forms of distraction. They don't actually solve any problems. And guys, you know, hear me out here. There's there's nothing wrong with a vacation or getting a massage by the sweet old Nepalese lady at the Ritz Carlton hotel spot, right? It's like, by all means, enjoy yourself. But what I'm saying is, is that let that be a commodity in your life. Don't let that be a necessity. You know, if you want to enjoy yourself, knock yourself out. Um, but just don't let that be a form of, uh, of escapism. Bottom line here is that you need to start viewing your problems as opportunities, right? Understanding that your beliefs dictate your reality. And the simplest way to just changing your reality is just changing what you believe about yourself. I get this feeling that maybe a lot of you guys are in this season oh shit, where you're scared, where you're confused. I just want to encourage you to sit with that feeling of discomfort, with that feeling of uncertainty, realizing that the answers that you're looking for lie within the things that you fear the most. The only way is through, guys. There's no way around the inner work. There's no substitution for doing the work. You can go on all the yoga retreats you want. You can listen to all of these spiritual gurus talk about healing, but it's like if you never take accountability, if you never take the responsibility to heal you know, your own brokenness, guys, life is gonna, that your problems in life are always gonna be recursive. So I'm gonna end on this quote here, guys, that I think is relative for this video. It's from Dune, which is just one of my all-time favorite movies at this point. I must not fear, 
Fear is the mind killer. Fear is the little death that brings total obliteration. I will face my fear. I will permit it to pass over me and through me. And when it has gone past, I will turn the inner eye to see its path. Where the fear is gone, there will be nothing. Only I will remain. So yeah, we'll end on that. Guys, only you will remain, not your depression, not your anxiety, your ADHD. Only you will remain.